Hello again, this is Kevin Ring. Today we're looking at the Disguise D3 media server. And uh, I was just going to give you a quick tutorial on how to get up and running with uh, some sources, some screens, uh, and route these to your outputs. So whenever you launch a project in Disguise, uh, we give you three things automatically. We give you Surface 1, Projector 1, and our dear friend Puck. P-U-C-K. We definitely recommend for Disguise that you utilize a mouse with a center scroll wheel. The center scroll wheel is going to be integral for you zooming in and out, and then pressing down on the scroll wheel allows you to pan and grab, and then left clicking and holding over an object will allow you to rotate in the three-dimensional world. Disguise is broken down into two distinct pages, the stage and the feed. The stage is where we build my 3D environment. The feed is where I'm then going to route that to physical outputs on my computer. Everything is going to be timeline based. Uh, to put content onto the screen, I need to add a layer to the timeline and add multimedia to the layer. So to do so, I see where my playhead is, which is the flashing white indicator. That's going to be where my first container or layer will be created. So if I right click on this flashing playhead, I can create a new layer. The types we have are content layers, control layers, effect layers, generative layers, legacy, and then pre-visualization. Content is where I can add things such as a video track, um, an image, which is a video, audio layer, um, even a website, which is really cool, or a render stream layer from an RX system. Control allows me to create a layer that I'm going to use to send out some type of control. This might be MIDI, this could be uh, DMX, this could be uh, brightness control, camera control, whatever I want. An effect is something I'm going to add, usually to a video layer, to give it some type of special effect. And generative layers are cool. This allows me to actually create content in real time based off the system. So typically we're going to do a video layer. And now by default, this creates the container that's one minute long, uh, but has no media associated with it. Sorry for my email pop up here. Oh my. So by default, the video layer is one minute long, but it has no media associated with it. In the upper left hand corner, I'm going to have the media, the video layer properties. Should I close this on accident, I could always just click on the video layer itself and it brings the properties window back up. The important tab I want is media. Media is where I can associate a piece of multimedia with the video layer. So we have the video drop down here where it says none. If I select this, this will show me all the content that's in my media folder. So I'll do good old George Costanza. Uh, we have full manipulation of everything on this video layer. So uh, for example, if I went down to move, I can change the size. I'm using this by doing my scroll wheel on my mouse. Size, position, rotation, everything else. Super fun. Give it a crop. Nice vignette. Very, very pretty. <laughs> now this is a um, layered based system. So if I add a new layer, uh, and I did a scroll layer, S-C-R-O-L-L, -L, scroll layer, which is an effect. Now note the layer itself is not doing anything. The source texture, though, is set as an arrow, meaning I can arrow in a different video layer into this effect layer. To do so, I'm going to hold the Alt key and draw an arrow from my video layer to my scroll layer. And now this layer has the properties of scrolling, even though my playhead's not moving. At this point, I can shorten and lengthen my container for my layer. And if I want more defined control of my system, I can right click my timeline and split the section. This now gives me a defined section break, which is going to act as a cue indicator. So now when I hit spacebar, which is played to the end of the section, the system will hold on this cue until I jump to the next section, which is going to be the less than and greater than sign or comma and period. So that's going to allow me to jump between my cues. I'm going to build a new queue now. Hit Control L, new layer, video. I don't have any content. I'm just using the things that come with disguise. But here is 16.9 color bars, which I will shrink them down. 
split my section, and I'll create a new layer. Video, I'll do um, Ada. Here she goes. Great. And yes, it is a morning, so I'm getting all my emails. All right, so now I can jump between all my sections. Now note we're doing a cut between the sections. What if I want to crossfade? The cool thing is with disguise, we can do this as a global level. So if I right click the D3 in the upper left hand corner, the two words, uh, the letter and number, that'll take me to the uh, D3 state. If I go down to project settings, and then down on the left hand side, we're going to have timeline control. There's one section here called global crossfade set to undefined. I'm going to set this to a fade with one second. Cool. This now has created a crossfade between every section break. So now when I jump between my sections, it's a beautiful crossfade. To make this more defined, if I right click my timeline at my playhead at each queue, I can add a note. So I'm going to call this George Scroll. I'm going to call this color bars. And then I'll call this one ADA. Cool. So now all of my cues are labeled. To take this one step further now, if I were to hit Control G, G for Go, Control G, this brings up an actual cue list that gives me the time remaining of that section with a nice Go button between each one. And since I set up global crossfade, I set up section breaks, I can now hit this in any order and jump between my content and my show. Fun. So now at this point, I want to actually output this from my computer. So if I go into my feed settings, I don't have an actual server connected, but the way I do it is I'm going to have my virtual screens up top. So you have my projector one, then I'm going to have all my outputs from my server. I can either right click and add a feed rectangle or the same way to the scroll layer, I can do alt and draw an arrow to the output. At this point now, I would be outputting from a live server. However, we're not done though. I can do scaling and rotation on the VFC card itself. If I right click the VFC output and go to lock sizes and hit unlocked, I can now do full scaling on the output. So if for some reason my projector resolution is slightly different, maybe it's 1366, 768, 1366, 768, I don't need to rebuild my stage because this is still unaffected. So the stage feed and the feed are not necessarily tied together. If I'm doing rear projection and I need to flip it, I can do so. And if I want to get really crazy, I can even slice and dice this up however I need to. So if I'm doing output remapping or frame remapping for an LED display for a processor, I can really maximize all the pixels I want. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, there's a whole lot more to disguise, a lot of power and flexibility, but hopefully this is just a very quick tutorial to get you up and running, exploring, have some fun. Don't forget the Disguise e-learning platform at training.disguise.one is absolutely fantastic. Um, if you don't have your designer license, go to disguise.one, sign up for the license, fully free. Uh, take the e-learning. It's awesome. Have fun, and we'll see you soon.